come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Have you ever paused to wonder what happens to famous people when fame is wrenched away? Consider this. To singers, actors, dancers, to all who perform on stage before live audiences, applause is their life's blood. To performers, that sound is the music of the spheres. They live on it, thrive on it, feed on it. But when homage fades, dies away into silence, what then? Some accept retirement gracefully, or seem to, as did a world-renowned ballerina until her 50th birthday. I will pay anything, everything, to be young, to dance again. I warn you, the cost will be high. And before we go on, I give you one last chance not to go on. You are here of your own free will. You still have free will. Decide. Do you still wish to collaborate with me? If yes, then there is no turning back. What do you say? Alexandra, yes or no? mystery drama, Give the Devil His Due, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Nancy Moore and stars Mercedes McCambridge. <laughs> Alexandra, incomparable ballerina, toast of two continents, Alexandra the Unsurpassed, it was said of her dancing that she was more than a star flung from the heavens. She was a constellation. What? What is wrong? What happened to my applause? Where is it, my applause? The bravos. I can't hear them. Please applaud. Call my name. What is wrong? Sandra. W wake up, Sandra. applause. Where did it go, please? please wake please, up. Please. I want my applause. That lovely sound. Someone has taken it away. Darling, darling, wait, wake up. What? What? Wait. There now. That's right. John? Yes, dear, it's John. You were dreaming. I was dreaming. Yes, sir. A bad dream. But you where am now? Where am I? What am I doing in this place? Andrew, you're home. Now, come on. Back to bed. I'm all mixed up. Come on now. Take my hand. I'm so cold. Of course you are. That thin nightgown dancing around the room. Oh, my head. It aches so. Oh, there now. That's my good girl. You'll feel better in a minute. Swan Lake. Huh? I danced Swan Lake. Oh, in the, in the dream, yeah, yes. What dream? What are you talking about? I danced Swan Lake last night. And such applause, John. I can't remember how many curtain calls. And the flowers. There were never so many. Sandra. Brava, Alexandra, brava. And one young man was calling out, I love you, I love you. And after the seventh encore, no. or was it the eighth? Sandra, stop it. Stop it right now. John, what has happened to you? You've always been so proud of my talent, my fame. And lately, you seem actually jealous of it. Alexandra, will you listen to me? You did not dance last night. You will not dance tonight. You haven't danced for 13 years since you retired. You're 50 years old. I am not. Fifty years old. Why do you say such things? Why have you turned on me like this? Oh, Zandra, dear Zandra, you're healed. It, it, it began a week ago on your 50th birthday. Well, it's not that. I am not 50. I am not. That's exactly what you said on your birthday. You screamed it. You, you knocked the cake off. The I am table. not 50. I am not. I am not. Where are you going? Forget your hand mirror. What? You'll look at yourself. 
Something you refuse to do all week. No, no. All right, then. If you can, tell me you're not 50 years old. There. Go ahead, look. No. Don't turn away. Look. I won't. Yes, you will. Please don't do that. You're hurting me. There will be marks on my arm. They will show in my costume tonight. All right, open your eyes and I'll let you go. There. Good. <laughs> now tell me what you see. I see beautiful Alexandra. The greatest ballerina the world has ever known. Oh, stop looking past the mirror. Look into it. Look. No, that's not me. That is someone else. She is ugly. Oh, so ugly. Take her away. No, she's not ugly. She's still very beautiful. But she is 50. Face it, Sandra. Face yourself. Why do you make me face it? Why? I hate what I am. Then you... You do know what you are. You know. Sometimes I know. But I don't want to. I want to go back. To go back. Oh, you can't go back. You can't live in the past. This is now. I hate now. But it exists and you're part of it. Yes, John, you are right. Of course you are. You listened, Daniel. You, you heard me. understood I listened, I heard. Now, will you do the same for me? Listen? Oh, certainly. I've known what's been going on this past week. Part of my mind has always known. I tried to blot out the truth, pretend that it is lies, and sometimes I can't do it. But you, you drag me back. How cruel, just now, in the mirror, with the wrinkles. Oh, Sandra, I don't want to hurt you, but I can't let you go on like this. You're getting deeper and deeper into this pretense. I, I, I don't know where it'll lead. Thank God we've talked about it honestly. And tomorrow, we'll talk more. Now, let's try to get some sleep. No, I haven't finished. There's something I haven't told you. You say I need to know that I am 50, that I can't dance, that I will never dance again. Well, you need to know that I will dance. I will. Oh, Zan. I know it sounds impossible to you, even mad. I know you can't believe it, but it is true. Alexandra, the unsurpassed, will dance again. All right, Sandra. Will you promise me something? All right. I'll stop talking about it. But that does not change what will be. No, no, no. I want you to talk about it. What? To a doctor. To a psychiatrist. I see. Please, darling, I beg you. This this is madness, what you're saying. You're, you're, you're headed straight for a breakdown. Do you think so, John? Well, there's been plenty of evidence, and now this. But I think it can be prevented. Very well, then. I shall see a doctor. Yes. I certainly will. You will? Tomorrow. <laughs> Dr. Stern, I want the truth. Please... Don't make promises you cannot keep. But I have no intention of doing that, Mrs. Scott. What would be gained by you or me? Aside from that, it is an honor to have the great Alexandra come to me for help. I have simply come to the best doctor in the profession. Now, exactly what can you do for me? First, you must understand there is no absolute guarantee. None? Plastic surgery will make you look younger. That is absolute. But for exactly how many years is speculative? However, I can make a very educated guess. You have fine bone structure. And that is basic to all beauty. Bones don't change. Only the skin, the muscles. When your skin is smooth again, wrinkles gone, loose flesh tightened, eyelids no longer sagging... Oh, 15 to 20 years, I think, Mrs. Scott. That's a lot of years, I know, but I believe I can achieve it. 
20 years. I will be 20 years old again. No, 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 no. You misunderstand. 15 to 20 years off your present age. Oh, how silly of me to put it that way. In other words, I would look 30. Oh, 30, 35. I suppose that will have to do. Now, about my body... You want body surgery as well? Of course. You can do the same thing for my body. Oh, Mrs. Scott, no, no. Age takes a toll of the body we cannot change. Ah, yes. Breasts lifted, superfluous fat removed. But if you mean your entire body made firm and beautiful... That is precisely what I mean. My dear lady, be realistic. Only magic could accomplish such a thing. Magic. Yes. Good morning, Dr. Stern. I am sorry for taking so much of your time. What is the lady's wish? Her fortune in the tarot cards? The palm? Or the crystal ball? I think... The crystal ball. The lady has chosen well. And please, please, I am in a hurry... Something troubles you very deep. We will begin. My hands upon the crystal. Oh, it's most strange what I see. I see you young, young and beautiful. Tell me. Tell me if I am dancing. Tell me. You, you, the, the crystal grows cloudy. The mist, I... I can see no more. Gone. All gone. But I have told you true. You will be young again. Please, please try again. I must know if I will dance. Carlotta has no power to see what her crystal ball does not wish to reveal. But you have other powers. No ancient magic. Can you make me young? Tell me. Does the lady... Fear a witch? I don't fear anything except age and not dancing again. Send me to her. The witch is a man, a warlock. But, lady, beware the cost. I don't care what it costs. Tell me his name. He wears many names, many faces. What name today, what face, I do not know, but... I do know where he dwells. Number 13, Gehenna Street. The door knocker. It's hideous. Gargoyle. Never mind that. Just knock. That sound. It's like doom. There is still time to run back down this crooked street. No, I will not. There is still time to run back down the crooked street, Madam Scott. You know my name. Your true name is Alexandra. I've been expecting you. <clears throat> my house is honored. How strange this room is. Uh, don't be alarmed by my treasures... They are ancient symbols of the occult. I am not alarmed. I am only surprised. Since you expected me, sir, and you know my name, you must also know my need. Your quest, your heart's desire. Yes, yes, I know. Can you do it? Oh, not can I, but will I? Then will you? If? And only if you agree to my terms, I warn you, they are costly. To be young, to dance again, there is nothing I wouldn't pay. <sighs> and now, since we are here to do business, I should know your name. You haven't told me. Well, my name, for a while, as long as it amuses me, is Azazel. Azazel? I've never heard that name before. That may prove to be your loss. Well, I have heard it now. So can we get started, please? Uh, not yet. Not yet. 
Before we go on, I give you one last chance not to go on. You are here of your own free will. You still have free will. Decide. Do you still wish to collaborate with Azazel? If yes, then there is no turning back. What say you, Alexandra? Yes or no? Yes. Mr. Azazel. Yes. Azazel. If Zandra Scott, a uh, correction, if Alexandra had remembered Milton's Paradise Lost, she would recall that Azazel is the name of a fallen angel who, with Satan, rebelled against heaven. And perhaps she would have run for her life down the crooked street. We will return to that street shortly with Act Two. It was Daniel Defoe who wrote, Every devil does not have a cloven foot, nor has Azazel, if devil he is. We can't be certain, can we? He may very well be only a charlatan, preying on the gullibility of foolish, vain people who wander down his crooked street. However, this I can tell you with certainty. Azazel is devilishly handsome. And wasn't it Shakespeare who wrote, The Prince of Darkness is a gentleman? So seems Azazel. Genial, courtly, charming. Madam? Will you sit here? Why, it's a kind of throne. And what more appropriate for Alexandra? Oh, how lovely it is to hear you call me that. Nobody does anymore. They call me Sandra. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Azazel... No, no, please, please. I dislike Mr. Azazel is enough. Azazel. Such an odd name. But I like it. I'm flattered. Now, you were about to ask what price I demand to make you young. Twenty. That's the age I want. Now, what if I said I'd take your husband from you? John, I wouldn't care. No? Your fortune? I quote you. Money, it's nothing to me. <laughs> How charmingly we agree. But I'm saying neither of those things. Merely testing you. All I require of you now is your promise that you will indeed pay anything, anything I should ask. <laughs> You'll learn the cost only after your transformation. Are you uh, willing to enter a pact so blindly? Yes, yes, yes. Well, how swiftly you leap, like a ballerina. <laughs> but consider, my lady, consider, Azazel may demand more than you care to pay. What have I to lose? I have nothing I care about. Nothing. Very well. Your promise, state it. I promise I will give... I promise I will give anything, everything, to be young, to dance as I danced when I was truly Alexandra. Don't make me wait any longer. Change me. Hurry. <laughs> Here, this moment. Yes. A greedy, impatient Alexandra. The metamorphosis will be done my way, in my time, not yours. Three nights must pass. The morning after the third night, you will be Alexandra. You must wait three whole nights. Well, Thirty years you've waited to be twenty again. You can wait three nights more, surely. Now, each night you will drink from this bottle. How much of it? <laughs> you require a label. As on ordinary medicine bottles are very well. Uh, shake well before using. Three tablespoons before bedtime. Prescription not refillable. Now you're laughing at oh, me. Indeed. No, no. I'm laughing at other people who, who take only man-made potions. Now, all is uh, understood? Yes. Give it to me. No, not, not, not so fast. Not quite all is understood. One more promise. On the morning of the third day, you will come here, down the crooked street. Go nowhere else first. You will come to Azazel to pay what you will pay. 
Give me your promise. Yes, yes, I promise. Excellent. And I give you the magic potion. Sandra? What are you taking? What's in that funny-looking bottle? Oh, it's medicine, John. Oh, what for? Well, I'm, I'm not feeling quite myself. You're not? Well, isn't that what you have been saying for a week? Oh, yes, but I didn't know psychiatrists prescribe medicine. But how silly you are. Of course they do. Tranquilizers, things like that. Oh, oh. Uh, and you do seem better already. Yes, I am. Much. All evening, not one word about... It. No, no, I, 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 don't, I don't want to get you started. About being young again. About how I will dance again. Uh, well, Sandra, please don't start. All right. Turn off the light, darling. A dancer needs a full night's sleep. Oh, Sandra... <laughs> You said that with humor and a, and a smile, and you know it's a joke. You are getting back to normal. Yes. Back to normal. Good night, John. John. John, wake up. Uh, oh, please. John. Uh, uh, what time is it? It's six. Six? What the, what the devil is you waking me up at six o'clock for? Because I want to know if I... Well, how do I look this morning? How you look? Yes, that medicine last night. The doctor said... Oh, well, he said take it and you'd, you'd feel better, didn't he? Do you? Uh, yes. Yes, of course, but I thought... I just got a notion that I might look. Better to do I, John. You look rested and very pretty. And there's a light in your eyes you haven't had for a long time. And I think your doctor is a genius. We might even say a magician. <laughs> Nearly seven o'clock. Seven. Oh. Sandra, what has gotten into you? We, we never open an eye until 8.30 or 9. Now, two mornings running. You... What? John, John, John. How do I look? Sandra, what is it you want me to say? I told you... Sandra. What? Sandra, are you taking some kind of... Of youth-restoring quack medicine? Is that what you're up to? I am taking what the doctor told me to take. And yes, I did hope it would make me look better. I mean, all week I've had such worry lines, so tense, so nervous. That's all. I just wanted to look better. That doctor, you never call him by name. Why? Well, it is such an odd name, it's hard to say. Just what is this doctor's name? It is Dr... Azazel. Azazel? What nationality is that? How do I know? And I certainly didn't ask. Now, Sandra, listen to me. Something's wrong. There's something phony here. What do you know about this doctor's credentials, about his... Where are you going? Do you mind to wash my teeth? I can't stand this awful bitter taste. Oh, the mirror... Look at me. Nothing has changed. Is something wrong? Azazel a phony. Is he... Sandra, I can't hear what you... I can't hear you. No, I was just looking at myself. And I can't bear it. Oh, darling, please don't start all that again. Oh, you old woman staring at me. I loathe you. Sandra, what on earth happened in here? It's nothing. It's nothing, John. It doesn't matter. I broke the mirror. By accident. Sandra? 
Chandra. You wake. Oh, what time is it? It's still dark. Oh, where's that blasted light? Oh, not quite six, damn. And just got me in a habit of waking. Honey, it's not fair. You sleep while I... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Sandra, what, what's happened to you? Hmm? Sandra, wake up. Uh, what? Oh, would, you, what? would you please, for God's sake, open your eyes? John. John, what on earth are you shouting for? John. Have I changed... Am I different? Different? Answer me. I am afraid to go and look. Go. Go, look. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, I don't, don't believe this. Just I... now, when I got out of bed, it was not my heavy 50-year-old body. Will you get to the mirror? This can't be. <gasps> oh. Am I mad? Or, or do you look the way I think you look? Oh, I am 20 years old. I am Alexandra. 20? In the name of heaven, will you explain to me how this could happen? Yes. It is the medicine. It was a magic potion given me by a warlock, a witch, Azazel. No, you are not dreaming. You are not mad. I am exactly what you see. He has given me back my true self. Please, John, no more arguments. I am going now. Zandra, this is goodbye. Zandra, one last time. No. Undo this unnatural, unholy thing before it's too late. You are too late. There is no turning back, even if I wanted to. Wait. Once you leave this apartment, walk out that door. Once you'll... I leave this apartment, I am free. Where will you go? Where else would I go? To the most famous of all ballet companies. To Sergius Kerensky... Ballet master and old friend. Oh, Zander, you see how mixed up you are. Sergius managed you 30 years ago. He's dead. Oh, how could I forget that? You see, come back in and close the door. Oh, don't be stupid, John. It is his son's company now, Peter Kerensky. I will go to him. He doesn't know it. But this is the luckiest day of his life and mine. Goodbye, old man. Sandra! I am free. It is the luckiest day of my life. On the morning of the third day, you will come here, down the crooked street. You will go nowhere else first. You will come to Azazel to pay... What you will pay. But I have paid, Azazel. I lost poor old John and his silly old money. Why should I go down your crooked street again? Do not play fast and loose with promises made here. It will be at your peril. But Azazel, <laughs> Mr. Azazel, Dr. Azazel, all this abacadabra was done so that I could dance. I can't bear to waste another minute. I am terribly sorry. But I have an appointment with Peter Kerensky. It was Cervantes who wrote, He needs must go, whom the devil drives. But uh, is that quotation appropriate here? Is it the devil who drives Alexandra? We still do not know who Azazel is. To her, he's only a sorcerer. And with the arrogance of newfound youth, she now dares defy him. It may well be that by not keeping her pact with Azazel, Alexandra is traveling down another crooked street. A dead-end street. We'll follow her when I return shortly with Act Three. Backward, turn backward, O oh time, in your flight. Can the clock be turned back? Can youth be relived? It would seem so. But is it wise to reach for the past? Finding it, 
May we not live it worse instead of better. Alexandra, age 20 again, has billed herself to Peter Kerensky as Zandra Scott. Curious that she should send in that name. Curious, too, that Kerensky agrees to see her. As a rule, he is not interested in unknown young dancers. Zandra Scott, is that right? That is the name I am using just now, Mr. Kerensky. Oh, you have another? A name you would recognize if I told it to you. Well, then uh, why the secrecy? No, it is not secrecy. You will know exactly who I am when you see me dance. Now, see here, I'm not sure I'm amused by such games. And why are you so sure I will give you an audition? I know, that's all. I am absolutely certain. Well, yeah, that's more than I am. I can't think why I even let you in here. Perhaps because I am a relative of the great Alexandra. Are you? But I didn't know that when your name was sent in. Aha, uh -huh, you knew it intuitively. Oh, come now. Well, at least I know why you looked familiar when you walked in. There's a very strong resemblance to Alexandra. Quite remarkable, really. So you remember how she looked? My dear lady, how could I forget? My father left a collection of at least a thousand photographs of that incredible face. You keep staring at me, Mr. Krensky. Yes, you know, it's uncanny. More and more, I see her face in yours. Um, are you her daughter? Alexandra had no children. Or a niece, then. Again, Mr. Kerensky. You will know who I am when you see me dance. Oh, no wonder you were sure I'd audition you. What fool would refuse any relative of Alexandra's? I did rather count on that. Yes, but it's not like me to waste time this way. Let's get on with it, please. You... Brought leotard and toe slippers in that bag, yes, I assume? Yes, yes, Well, I'll get hold of the practice pianist. What music, ma'am? Giselle, the mad scene. Why, that's one of the most difficult... Isn't that rather ambitious of you? For some ballerinas, yes. For this one, though. I have danced that role many times. Uh -huh. As you will. Oh, uh, that door just to your left. You can dress in there. Then come on stage. I'll be waiting out front with my assistant. But why should I audition for anyone but you? Because I want it that way. How much warm-up will you need? None. None? I shall be ready in five minutes. Oh, oh. Vain as a peacock. But if you're as good as you think you are, then why not? <laughs> Wait until you see her, Trina. Oh, the reincarnation of Alexandra? Well, that's the feeling I have. Oh, well, if she has half Alexandra's talent, a, a quarter of it, but she's a fine. A real beauty, too. Eyes like... Oh, there she is in the wings. Oh, Peter. She could be Alexandra's twin. What did I tell you? You ready, Miss Scott? I have always been ready. Oh. Very well. Music, begin. <laughs> Now, you vain, lovely creature, let's see what you can do. Oh, the little fool should have had a warm-up. All right, all right, I expected a slow start, but come on, let's see something. What's going on up there? Wait, Peter, give her a chance. I am, I am. Oh, I will be damned. What is that? It's nothing. No elevation, no extension, no technique, whatever. Not even any grace. This girl's clumsy. That is a trained dancer. Well, she's a right amateur. Did she really think she could put this over on Kerensky? A chance resemblance to Alexandra, and she palms herself off as a relative. Oh, she couldn't have a teaspoon of Alexandra's blood. Damn little upside tricked me. Does she really believe she can dance? All right, cut, cut. That's enough. Why? Why did you stop me? Uh, come down here, please, Miss Scott. Trina, this girl's out of her mind. I I'd better handle this alone. Wait for me in the office, please. Thin ice, Peter. Handle with care. I know, I know. How could you do such a thing? 
I was just beginning the marvelous dramatic passage where I Yes, yes, I I know, but uh, uh, I'm terribly sorry, but I don't think you're quite ready for that just yet. Not ready? Miss Scott, do you think you're ready? My experience, my talent, how could I not be ready? You actually think you danced well up there? You believe that? I, I didn't. Indeed, you did not. But I felt so marvelous. And the music and the stage. I was Giselle. It all came back to me as if I were... Mr. Kerensky, what are you saying to me? I'm saying you're not ready for this company or any company for that matter. No, no, please. You don't understand. I came here too soon. I should have trained. I thought I didn't need to, but I... Mr. Kerensky, I have not danced for some time. I did not realize I would be so rusty. Any real dancer knows she has to practice every day of her life. But I didn't think that I had to. But I will go, and I will train, Uh, and I will be back. Miss Scott, please, I'm a busy man. You've had your audition. It's over. Don't bother to come back. I'd be less than kind to encourage you. Now, I'm sorry to be so blunt, but you simply have... No talent. How dare you say that to me? How dare you claim you're related to Alexandra? If by some mischance you are, you blight that famous name. No, I am not related to her. So you admit it. I am Alexandra. I am Alexandra. Wait, wait. You fool. You tell me I have no talent. I who danced with Nijinsky. Oh, my poor child. Nijinsky died before you were born. So, you have come... What have you done to me? Why have you done it? Come, come in, Alexandra. I am not Alexandra. I am nothing. Why did you do it? Why did you break your promise to come here? There was no need to keep it. I paid what you wanted. You have not paid. You went your own foolish way. That was your gratitude to the one who made you young and fair. I am young again, yes. But my body, it won't obey me. Can you say that you didn't do that? If you had kept your promise, you would have kept your talent. And I must ask you to stop shouting. It offends I want me. to go now. I don't like it. Not here. so fast, Alexandra. It may be I shall reconsider what I have done. Huh? If you are still willing to give everything in return. But I have already given everything. No. I don't know what else you want. But I don't care whatever it is. You take it, you take it all. And let me dance. <laughs> the bargain is struck. You shall dance. As I used to. Far better than that. But you shall dance to my tune. Look into my face, Alexandra. Oh. What do you see? You. You. Who am I? Oh. Oh, you know my name? Say it. No. You've known me from the beginning. If you thought of anyone except yourself. Oh. Are you ready to dance? No. Here. Now. Here. A kind of rehearsal. You could call it that. But in these clothes, I can't. Ah, the first change, then. Look upon yourself, Alexandra. What? It is my costume for the sleeping beauty and my ballet slippers, everything. An appropriate costume, yes. Have you not been sleeping? Huh? But now, the prince has awakened you. <gasps> Alexandra, may I have this dance? Dance with... With... A pas de dieu with... The devil himself. You are highly honored. But can the devil dance? (laughs) 
you will find that Nijinsky was an ox compared to me. All that I don't believe. You doubt that Satan can do anything he desires. Music! Come. Come. Your hand... Beautiful, Alexandra. You dance like... like an angel. Yes, I know. I feel it. Never before like this. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Now... Now I will conquer the world again. No. What do you mean, no? You promised me. My promise will be kept. As you have kept yours. You promised to give everything. At this precise moment, you have. What have I given? The world. You've lost it. Alexandra will dance forever. But only in limbo with Satan. Warning. The devil will have his due. To those who refuse to heed that warning, let them learn from the fate of Alexandra. Oh, yes, she realized her ambition. We can accurately say her burning ambition. But until the end of time, the flames of hell will laugh at her dancing feet. I'll be back shortly. You don't believe in the devil? There is no such evil being? Ah, then a final warning needs to be sounded here. In the too often ignored words of Baudelaire, the devil's cleverest wile is to persuade us that he does not exist. Our cast included Mercedes McCambridge, Joe Silver, Ian Martin, Bryna Rayburn, and Peter Donald. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>